Good morning. Welcome to this celebration of the life of Dolores Franklin. So grateful that you're here. I want to mention two things as we move forward. One is that lunch will be served afterwards. And when you're gone in here, just make a left and walk straight on down into the fellowship hall. Please stay. That's a real holy time for people to share and to talk freely and then to be fortified for the journey ahead. And the second thing I want to make sure you know that there's a place in the service, time of remembrance. And if there's anyone who wants to say anything, that's the time for you to share. That's also a real holy time because people, people want to hear what you have to say. And that's why you've come today. So when that time comes, you can either come forward or just stand at your seat and speak loudly. Let's join in a word of prayer. Dear God, gather us in this day as we come to celebrate a life well lived, the life that you have given to Dolores and to all who are here. We ask that you would watch over us, help us in this hour with whether we're speaking or saying or reading or offering music. Help us this day to look to the eternal life that is ours and that surely this day belongs to Dolores, to guide us, direct us, and be our light. Amen. We have music during the service, and that music will just be a music <coughs> offering, not a singing. reading is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Those of you who are fellow members of St. John, I guess we all know coffee hours will never be quite the same again. Will we? <laughs> and you know that so much um, really was Dolores, right? She was didn't like to be in the limelight. She wasn't somebody that wanted a lot of attention on herself, but she always got she always got it done for us, right? Something like uh, Phyllis said, something needed doing, and Dolores would make sure it got done. Without a lot of fanfare, didn't want a lot of credit. Uh, was just a wonderful person that way. And I remember so well uh, with my children, Janice and ours, you know, when Nathan was born many years ago and we were getting ready to, for Janice to go back to work because in those days you really had to do those kind of things. And uh, he was all, all but six weeks old. And we were starting to look at daycare centers and, you know, Dolores would just have none of that. So 
she really felt that she wanted to spend time with her grandchildren. And, um, you know, I thought that was great. And I thought, well, that'll last about six months. You know, it's a lot of work to take care of little kids. And uh, when he gets a little older, she'll be fine with him. And she just never did. She, um, Nathan was there until he was with um, kindergarten. Uh, the same is very true with Aaron. And all the time she helped us with, um, you know, with Aaron, of course, is a little more challenging than most other kids are. And, um, you know, Dolores was always there for us. If we needed to go someplace, or we wanted to go on a trip, or even just, just go out for dinner. And then finally, of course, our youngest, Maya, who we has adopted. And you know, adopted children, we sometimes have this fantasy that they're going to immediately you know, join their family and be so delighted to be there. And that's not really true because you know, for them, it's a real change. It's a, uh, these are people they don't know, they're not familiar with. So the two weeks we were in China, um, you know, were hard on Janice and I because Maya it took a little while to warm up to the family, right? And you have to work through those. So of course, Dolores was here in rural, taking care of Aaron again while we were gone. And uh, you know, as we were traveling back, we were kind of worrying, you know, don't don't be offended if she seems a little bit, off, you know, stand back, put offish a bit when you see her. Yeah, 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 fine, fine. So finally, after this incredibly long 14-hour flight back from Hong Kong, and you can imagine we were just exhausted. Janice was, had picked up a bug, so she was sick the whole time. And uh, I think I walked back from Hong Kong, quite frankly. <laughs> Maya just did not want to sit down. So we were all quite exhausted when we finally landed. And I thought, and there's Earl and Dolores waiting for us outside the gate and here in Appleton. And I thought, boy, this is not going to go well. Because Maya is crabby. This is another person. And, um, you know, she took... <laughs> She took one look at Dolores and almost like left in her arms, bosom up. You know, it was quite amazing. So, uh, you know, I think little kids know and they sense that. So, we're going to miss Dolores terribly.
met Cindy was in school at, at Madison, and I think I maybe ran into her and Dolores a couple times, like at football games. But I had never been to Appleton. I didn't know anything about Appleton. And so I think it was the first time I got invited up to Appleton. I made a side comment like, why do I want to go to Cowtown? Well, that was not the thing to say to someone from Appleton. So I came up after work, it was dark. I drove up, you know, had the directions, drove up in front of their house. And I could see some, some images or there was something in the yard. I couldn't quite tell what it was at all. And so I get out of the car and they, everyone from the house comes out and the lights flash on and here there's cardboard cows in the yard. <laughs> there's a milk can and there's a milk stool. Well, I certainly had my picture taken sitting on that stool. Um, that was the last time I ever called Appleton Cowtown. <laughs> uh, I noticed as we were looking through the house the other day, I saw that stool, so brought, brought back funny memories for me. I always enjoy the uh, stories that Dolores had about her dad doing trapping around the Chicago area. And I think some of that rubbed off on Dolores too, because anytime she would borrow a, a rabbit trap of mine, the rabbits got to stick around her house and she would thin them out with that. <laughs> yeah, that's excellent one very well. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Now, please take the time when you're having lunch to share. And thank you to everyone who did speak up. Thank you, it's a blessing. I now will hear um, Amazing Grace. <laughs>
There's just so much to say about Dolores. So many of you have already given such great insights. When we first came here three and a half years ago, Earl and Dolores were always so kind to us. But the thing that I remember most about Dolores is she was going to talk and she was going to tell you something. And then the next week she's going to tell you the same thing again because maybe you didn't get it the last week. And then the story just got bigger and bigger. She was always handing me little pieces of paper with little things about what different coins meant and if you find a penny. Her latest thing that she wanted me to know and to read was a book by Dr. Seuss, a book about growing old. And it was rather funny, and I've read it so many times, and I just gave it back this morning. But she said, that book, when you read it, you're going to know. It's about when you get older and you go to the doctor, and then they take you from one room to the next, to the next, to the next, all of the above, with more ailments, more medication, more everything, until they boot you out the door saying, well, you're just going to be who you are, basically. She loved that story. She loved Dr. Seuss. We'll talk about that in a minute. But more, she loved people. She was always so proud of Aaron, always talking about how they were taking care of Aaron. And this is recently. This is not years and years and years ago, although that was true, too. She loved everyone. She talked. Even the last time we saw one another, the beginning of October, on the 62nd anniversary, she was sad because she couldn't go to the wedding. She couldn't make it out there, but knew it was okay because they're going to be able to watch it. They can watch it via Zoom. There's always something about that because she loved unconditionally, loved so much. She loved her Dutch heritage. The diversity Sunday when we had the meal in the hall down there, what would appear but cookies? They looked like tulips. They looked like windmills. They looked like something. But it was Dutch. Do you want the Dutch kind or the other? Do you want the frosted kind or the other? For the way Dolores would bring things for the election day bake sales that are out here in the lobby. Actually, we hear that people would come for that bake sale just to get her lemon bars, not to come here to vote. There's always something about that and something precious and beautiful. Yeah, coffee hours will never be the same without Dolores, who is bringing in things. She and Janice baking, making, always looking for a new recipe, always another stack to go through to figure that out. There's something to be said about that, too, because isn't that the way to people's hearts, to keep feeding them, to keep loving them with what they do? Children were important to her, grandchildren important to her. What she did as a volunteer important to her. Always proud of being able to go and read and help and do. This was Dolores. But she also, Earl, loved you a lot. She talked especially about going to EAA, you going there, to volunteer all those years. And then when Maya, is old enough to go and be with you so that you both can go volunteer down there. It was important. Singing in the choir, being here in church, being the last ones to leave this room because they're listening to Tim on the postlude, being the last ones in here, and then being the last ones out of the coffee room because, well, there's people to talk to and more news to know and more news to impart. I mean, this is really her. But you know, people told me also of a Dolores years ago. She's family to them. People first coming to this church, newly to St. John. And who greets them but Earl and Dolores and who doesn't leave them? That's the truth. Who would invite them over for these giant picnics in the yard? Who would become parents? in so many ways and how parents were also friends with Earl and Dolores and so then it became even a bigger family and how people who weren't even related in that group got brought in too. You see, this is the light that's Dolores, the light that shines deeply in the darkness of the world, such that loving soul. And aren't the flowers pretty today? Aren't they beautiful? Well, this is something from Dolores too who loved to be in the garden and loved out front here of church, if only it were springtime, summertime, when we could see 
all the beautiful perennials that are out there in the front. That's Dolores Earl, that's Janice, and that's everyone else who would come to help. It meant something to her. A tireless worker for the church in so many ways, and others have spoken to that. If you want to get it done, ask her. Dolores was always kind of late to ladies' bill, I noticed. But you know, I think she's probably always busy. Always busy, and then it was time for ladies' guild, so she hurries over here, always being a part, always talking, always sharing. If there was a question when I first came here about St. John, I could ask Dolores about it because she would know about it. Who's who, who's what, how did it really work out? That was the way, and you know that, and you know that to be true. Ah. <sighs> Never wanted to be the center of attention, and yet today, here she is. Didn't want a service because she thought no one would come. And yet since about 8.30 this morning, the doors of this church have opened and closed with so many coming to remember her and to share her life and to share what? Not her sadness and that she's passed, but to share the joy that you have because Dolores has been a part of. She didn't like her smile. She didn't really want to be in pictures. But I, did you look at them all out there? Did you see that smiling little person with her baby doll? Did you see her picture with her brothers? Did you see her with all of you together, even right outside the church here? But her gift, talking to people. Talking to people. Loving people. When I was over at the house last week, I got taken into the TV room. I guess that's what you might call it. And there on the wall is a family tree. Pictures from the early 1800s. Early 1800s, can you believe it? That Dolores had traced back her family. And even when they had gone to Holland to do some looking and some working, were able to see some of the spots where her family was from, ultimately way back when, her picture will be on there now. <clears throat> One of you will be left to keep that up, to keep the line going so that everyone knows what great lineage, what great tree you come from. She loved the research. She even seen boat records for people. She loved to find this out. And I'll bet you she was really proud of it too. Really proud of the work that she was able to do. So I mentioned Dr. Seuss. Thank God for Google. I Googled, are there some great wisdom pieces from Dr. Seuss? So here we go, just a couple. Today you are you. That is truer than true. I could hear her saying that. You're off to great places. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. Dolores is one of the people who was making things better by caring a lot. You'll miss the best things if you keep your eyes shut. Now, one of the things I like most is when the Grinch's heart grew and grew and grew. Because that's what we do, is it not? So we've heard today from two different scripture. We heard about Jesus offering up to the disciples to not let our hearts be troubled. It's kind of hard at times like this to not be troubled, and yet we know the one who then goes on to tell us, but I go to prepare a place for you, and when I'm there, you will be there too. With God, in the arms of Jesus for all eternity, that's the truth, and that's the witness today. But then we have the other witness, Psalm 23, that is even a bigger one, where we proclaim that the Lord is our shepherd. There's nothing that we want, need, anything, and that all that God has provided for us in green pastures and rolling waters, all that God has blessed us with, more than we ever will need in great abundance, goodness and mercy will follow us today and always. That's the truth that we hold on to today, the truth for our grief, the truth for our very own lives. 
and the last scripture for us to hear this day. And I think that Dolores is telling me in my head, get on with it, tell it, go sit down. I hear her saying, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Yeah, that is true. So we move to a time of prayer this day, prayer for family and prayer for the meal that will be shared. Let us join our hearts. Oh God, our strength and our redeemer, you are the giver of life, the conqueror of death. We praise you, O oh God, with humble hearts this day and with faith in your great mercy and wisdom, we entrust Dolores to your eternal care. We praise you for your steadfast love for her all the days of her earthly life. We thank you for all that she was to those who loved her. We thank you too, O oh Lord, that for Dolores all sickness and sorrow are ended, and that now she has entered that place that you have promised, where all your people gather in peace. Today we pray especially for Earl. Cindy, Janice, Sandy. We pray for all family and friends gathered here. We pray for their hearts, for their love. We pray for the grief that is theirs, that their mourning would turn to dancing in whatever time works for them. We pray for this gathering of people that will share a meal today, that the meal would bless and fortify us for the journey ahead, ever carrying on, being the light that Dolores was, so that we too may hear the words that we have fought the good fight, finished the race, kept the faith. So keep us all in communion with your faithful people of every time and place, that at last we may rejoice together in the heavenly family where Jesus Christ reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer our Savior taught us, using whatever words are familiar to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Dolores back to the very one who created her and gave us her and her spirit. After this, please remain seated until um, the family has left the sanctuary after we hear the music. Into your hands, gracious Lord, we commend your servant Dolores, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your everlasting rest, along with all the saints in light. And we give you praise for her this day. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>